What is up, my friends? Welcome to the Theros Beyond Death complete set review. My first ever. So hopefully you're all enjoying it. This is red. We did white, we did blue, we did black. Now we're doing red. And of course, if you missed any of those, they'll all be up on my YouTube, uh, Jim Davis MTG. Make sure you look for that. Subscribe, like, comment, follow, do all that stuff. Seriously. Helps me out so much. But um, total set review. We're going through every card um, with a focus on Constructed. But because we're going through every card, a lot of cards are meant for Limited, obviously. So I'll be discussing Limited a little bit as well. Um, and we're going through every single card, talking about them all, and um, I get to play these cards next Wednesday. That's right. This, well, I guess this Wednesday coming up, I'll be doing the Early Access Stream. It's a streamer event on Arena, and we get one day to play with God Accounts and play with all the cards. And what I do is, I brew up 10 new decks, and I play them over about 12 hours, and then I record them all for YouTube. That's going to be really fun. And then I do an article on CoolStuffInc.com, where I write articles. Uh, 10 new brews for whatever the set is. It's a lot of fun. It's honestly my favorite piece of content that I do. And a lot of fun new brews, a lot of cool ideas. So look for that uh, this coming Wednesday. I'll be streaming. And then the article's on Friday on CoolStuffInc.com where I do a video Monday and an article on Friday. So check all that out. CoolStuffInc.com. Check the sponsors over here. And uh, I love you all. So let's get started with Red. And we start with the Demigod. Exciting card. Annex Hardened in the Forge. Red, Red 1 for a X3, so at least a 2-3. I want to go over rate really fast. It's the most important concept. I know I've said it a few times, but rate is really important. Rate is the numbers on the card, how big they are. Questing Beast, really good on rate. A 4-4 haste for 4 is already good. You add more stuff on that, you have a great magic card. Goblin Lackey, not so good on rate. So it's a 1-1 one, one for 1. It becomes good because the ability is greater than the, than the, than the rate on the card. So rate's the first thing we look at in any sort of new card scenario. So the rate here is red, red, one for a two, three at minimum, which is reasonable. It's also an enchantment creature relevant. Whenever Annex or another creature, another non-token creature you control dies, create a one, one red satyr that can't block. If the creature had four power or greater, create two tokens. So at its face, this is a... Hmm... It's 2 3 for, for 2 3 for 3, but dies makes it 1 1. Definitely an interesting card. So if you if you play a second copy of this card, do they see each other for devotion? So it counts as 4 power and you get 2 tokens? I, I would need to call a judge on that one. And we'll see. Uh, if that's the case, that's pretty good. So each extra copy is 2 tokens. I'm not sure if they see each other. I think you would. Oh, you, I'm sorry, you get four tokens because they each trigger on each other. That's pretty good. That is a very, very good effect. So the the ability on this card and the fact that it's legendary stacks pretty nicely. So every extra copy you draw is just four, four one ones that can't block. This is a good aggressive card. Um, this is definitely a good aggressive card. It gives you some wrath protection. It's not super great by itself. Um in that this card definitely needs other things to be good, you know, but with more devotion in play, we have a 4-3 or a 5-3, and if it dies, they get a token. It's pretty cool. This card's pretty good. Um, I worry that it is a little expensive for a, like, a mono-red aggro deck, and a 1-1 token that can't block is significantly worse than a 1-1 that can block. You know, tokens are often good chump blockers. They're good in racing scenarios. Um... They can't always attack profitably because they're so small. So you can chump with them or you can double block with them. The fact that tokens can't block is a really big downside. Even if we're aggressive. You know, even if you're aggressive, maybe you're racing, maybe you're protecting a planeswalker. So not being able to block, you know, is a significant downside. Makes this card better against control decks and creature light decks and much worse against creature decks. But there's a good amount of power here. Um, it definitely operates, like I said, in kind of a weird space where it's a little expensive for a super aggro deck and maybe not powerful enough in a more mid-range deck. Um, it plays very badly against Teferi. Um, you play this, they play Teferi, they bounce it. Um, things like that. Brazen Bar is pretty, pretty, good, pretty good against this. Um, my gut tells me this card isn't as good as it looks. And those words might come back to bite me. Um, but... If they kill this card, you get a bad 1-1. One, one. I just don't think this card is great in, like, mid-rangey matchups. And standard is a lot about that. 
it's a lot about you know getting on the board, planeswalkers, gummed up boards, um, plays well with Torben. That is very true. Um, certainly a good card, but it's it's tough. Plays well with the sure plays well with the cat oven is also true. There's a lot of things going on here. This is honestly a pretty interesting card that I probably need to see him play to really get a, a, a full feel for. But my my concerns are that the tokens not being able to block is a major downside and that just by itself is not doing enough um, for three mana. So and it's a little over the curve in an aggro deck. So it's definitely a very, uh, a very interesting card. Tough place to start here. Tough place to start. This is the kind of card that you need, you need to see him play to really get a feel for how good it is. But it's certainly good with like a, with the Woe Strider we saw, um, sacrifice effects, things like that. So, and obviously you can sacrifice the tokens for extra, extra value too. So I might be undervaluing this card, but we will see. We will see. Arena Trickster. We have a 3-3 a three, three for 4. When you catch your first spell during your opponent's turn, put a counter on it. So typical limited fodder. Um, this card seems pretty reasonable and limited. Um, once you get that first counter on it, it's you're getting a pretty good rate. And then if it scales beyond that, it's reasonable. Um... Did I miss a card? I missed a card. Nope, it's the it's the Acronym War. Sorry, we're good. Um, so reasonable limited card, not super exciting, but definitely playable. Unplayable constructed. It's fun. You know, not not super exciting. It's the kind of card you play, but might cut from your deck if you have four drops. Um, it's hard to know how well the mechanic of playing spells in your opponent's turn plays out, how much support there is for it, but it seems reasonable. Aspect of Manticore. Three mana for a flash enchant creature. And as a battlefield, creature gains first strike on a turn, it's plus two plus O. Oh. So this card is kind of similar to uh, Indomitable Will in that it's an orb, it's also a trick. And I like cards like this a lot. But this card's a little overpriced. So Indomitable Will is two mana and you get plus one, plus two. So you leave behind a much more durable and powerful threat. This card, you just leave behind two power and no toughness. So while it is a reasonable trick, you know, I attack my 3-3, three, three, you block with your 3-3, three, three, I play this. Now your card is dead, you trade one for one, but I have a 5-3. It's just not that exciting. Um, I don't think this card's very good. At two mana, I'd be a little more excited, but even then I would be super pumped about it. Because toughness is important. Um, and if you're in combat scenarios and limited, pumping up your toughness is pretty important. Not really cool with this card. And obviously unplayable when constructed. Blood Aspirant. Two mana for a 1-1. One, one. So as we were saying with rate, this card better have some good abilities. What if you sacrifice a permanent, put a counter on Blood Aspirant. Okay. Two mana, tap, sacrifice a creature or enchantment. It deals one damage to target creature, and that creature can't block. That's a lot to parse. Um, it plays well with the, with the Demigod, of course. Um, it's not great. Like, the costs here are pretty high. Um, you're not getting much up front. You're, you are not um, doing anything in turn you play it, because it has tap ability that requires you to, to tap it. You have to sacrifice resources just to get a ping. This card's okay, but it's not really super impressive. I don't see this card constructed. Um, if it was just when a permanent died, I'd be more excited. But even then, it's like unruly mob. Basically, it's just not super exciting. If this card was a two-two or had more, had better, better rate stats, I'd be a little more interested. But the the effects here are not adding up to the low rate. Um, also, if the ability was just two mana uh, sacrifice colon with no tap ability, I'd be interested in that too. But having to play your one-one and have it survive, and untap with it, and tap the ability, and sacrifice a creature. There's too many things that need to go right for this card to be good. Um, I would say this card's mostly unplayable, constructed, and then not very exciting and limited. Your opponent has a lot of 1-1s or X-1s, maybe, but this card's not very exciting. Careless Celebrant. Another uncommon 2-mana two 2-1. Two when it dies, 2 damage to a creature, or Planeswalker to opponent control. This card's very reasonable. Um... In any sort of creature matchup, this card's very good. Uh, you know, you block their creature, you kill a different creature. A lot of two, lot of two form potential, um, sacrifice potential. This is a card that's pretty good on rate. Two over twos, obviously okay. And then the the fear is 
that it can't hit players. If it can hit players, this card would be phenomenal. Like, phenomenally good. But um, the fear is, of course, that this is on an empty board, and then it dies, and then it doesn't do anything. So that's not very exciting. Um, especially this is a creature or a planeswalker. If it dies, definitely a reasonable card. Definitely good at like mono red mirrors and things like that in constructed, but may not be good enough for constructed because of the 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 downside of just not doing anything with anything in play. And then limited. This card's great. This card's phenomenal. Limited. Um, it's a, already a bear, which is fine. And then it's it's a it's a, a potential two for one a lot of the time in limited. So fantastic limited card. Could see play constructed, but eh, it's okay. Next card is Dream Shaper Shaman. It is a six mana five four enchantment creature. Minotaur Shaman. Beginning of your end step, you may pay three mana. So already I'm unhappy. We have a five four comes into play for a six mana, and it's just not good on rate. Nor does it do anything when when you actually play it. So you need to untap with it, have it survive an entire turn cycle and then do something. So you pay three, and sacrifice a non-land permanent. If you do, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a permanent card, put it on the battlefield, and the rest in the bottom. Yeah, this card kind of sucks. Um, I mean, just obviously totally unplayable and standard. And then in limited, I mean, it's it's okay. You can sack your 1-1 one, one and try and get a bigger card, but this card is just pretty mopey. Uh, not a very exciting card. Magic is the true artist's medium. A little, uh, little, uh, what's the, what's the word for that? Self-awareness. This card, however, this card is great. Uh, Dreamstalker Manticore. So, these kind of cards typically have poor rate. Uh, Gutter Snipe. You know, um, the rare 2-2 in blue in the set where you draw a card with the same mechanic. This is a 4-2, not a 2-2. And that makes a very large difference in how the card plays out. A card like Gutter Snipe never really worked because a 2-2 two -two for 3 just sucks, basically. And taking your turn 3 to play a spell and not really affect the board, it's not a blocker, it's not an attacker, just kind of there, then you untap, and then you can do stuff, is often not good enough. This card attacks for one-fifth of your opponent's life total. It can block things larger than it. And then the ability is is honestly pretty reasonable. I mean, it's may not seem super exciting in constructed to just like ping things for one. But um Herald of Storms, I believe it was called, the one four with reach that would ping things and you cast spells was was very good. There's obviously a limiting factor here in that this card can only trigger once a turn. But you're powering up your burn spells, you know, there's certain matchups where this card can just pick off X1s, um, turning a shock into Arc Trail. You know, this is um, this is a card that could see play in sideboards for sure. Um, and again, a lot of it is because of the rate. Probably not a main deck card. You know, the pinging one damage has to matter. But as a sideboard card, this definitely has potential in Constructed. Don't dismiss this card because it looks like a limited card. And this card's obviously phenomenal and limited. A 4-2 for 3 is already fine. And then if you kill one creature with this, you're way ahead. Way ahead. Um, so yeah, it's also an enchantment too, which is nice. Escape Velocity. One mana aura. With, I, I actually just love every one of these one mana auras with escape. Escape on an aura is so good. So one mana, plus one plus O, oh, and it's haste. So not a great power boost there. Haste is obviously cool, but... Not a great card, but definitely fine. And then it has escape for two, not one. Exile two cards. If this card escaped for one, I would love this card. Love it. Um, escape velocity, that is really funny. Uh, I would love this card at one mana to escape. Two mana is less impressive. You know, if we had the ability to play this on turn four, escape it on a three drop, and just keep doing that, you know, turn five, escape it on a four drop, you know, kind of keep doing that, that'd be really, really cool, but the escape cost being two probably just sinks this card, uh, the one mana give your creature haste effect isn't really good enough, the power boost isn't really enough without boosting toughness, you know, making your 2-2 into a 3-3 is a really big game, but making it into a 3-2, it just gets blocked by the same stuff, um, I want to like it, 
but I don't think it's really there and constructed. Uh, I may be wrong, as I've said multiple times in this review. I think the escape mechanic, every card with escape is better than you think it is. I said the exact same thing for Adventure and Eldrain, and uh, I was right. Uh, Adventure is much better than it looked. This is also much better than it looks. But I think this just might not be enough. Uh, we will see. In Limited, it's reasonable. You're not getting a huge value for your card, but the fact that you can do it over and over again is nice. The game changes when this card is in your graveyard and you hit the mid-game. Your opponent has to respect the fact you could haste anything. Um, you can reconstellate, too, with this. You can Constellation over and over again. That is also a relevant thing, too. But I think you might be a little too, too, little too far below the bar here. Faithful End. Lightning Bolt Scry Run for three. Well, it's better than Open Fire, right? Uh, can't see this card making it constructed, but in limited, this card's phenomenal, obviously. Uh, open Fire is a fine limited card. Adding Scry 1 to Open Fire is great. So, not much to evaluate there. Pretty simple. Final Flare. Three mana instant. As an extra cost, sacrifice a creature or an enchantment. Deal five for target creature. This card is not great. Um, it's certainly playable in limited, but I am not happy about it. Fiery Conclusion was a card that existed before this. It costs two, but could only sacrifice a creature. Um, three is a lot more than two, but you can sack you. You can sack your omens. You can sack. Um, you know, you could sack your seer seer tokens. If you have synergy that makes this card reasonable, uh, I'm okay with it. But without synergies, you don't want to sack your two drop to this card. You know that feels pretty bad. You're just two for one yourself. If you're desperate for removal and limited, this card's okay. If you have a lot of omens, this card's pretty good, but it's pretty contextual to the texture of your deck in limited. It's going to range from being pretty good to, eh, and then constructed, obviously, it's unplayable. If it was keto damage to players, it would probably still be unplayable and constructed, honestly. Maybe not, but Flamuxed Cyclops. Three mana, I'm sorry, four mana for a 4 4 reach. So. On rate alone, that's pretty good. However, it has whenever two or more creatures your opponent control attack, it can't block. <laughs> that's hilarious. This card's awesome. <sighs> so if your opponent attacks with two or more creatures, it just can't block because it gets confused. <laughs> it's a Cyclops, it only has one eye, so it's like... And just falls over, it can't block. I love this card. <laughs> this card gets an 11 out of 10. Uh, just love it. Just love it. So, obviously more of an aggressive card. It's pretty funny this card has reach. Because it's like, it can't even block half the time anyway, but the fact that this is a 4-4 four, for four, 4 and limited is very, very reasonable. You know, um, you want this more in an aggro deck than a, than a control deck, or a slower deck, but definitely, just I just, I'm just going to giggle to myself and go to the next card. <laughs> what do I do? Furious Rise, 3-minute enchantment, uh, beginning of your end step. You control a creature with power 4 greater, exile the top card of your library, you may play that card to exile the next card. This card blows. Um, we've seen this enchantment in green a number of times, and it's often just like, draw a card. And this card is just going to do nothing a lot of the time, and even then it might not be good. Um, I'm pretty unhappy with this card in constructed, and then in limited, even then, I mean, if your deck has to, has, has to have a lot of 4 power creatures. And even then, like, just kill your opponent with the 4 mana creatures, you know? So... It does happen immediately, and I get that, but you already have a four power creature in play. You know, like this this card's just not. The, the opportunity cost is far too high here. Heroes of the Revel. Five mana for a four four. Comes into play, make a token. If you cast a spell, it targets it. Creatures get bigger. Um, this card's okay. Um, on rate, this is a uh, basically a four four and a one, a one one for five. That's okay and limited. Um, obviously unplayable, constructed, but. And the, the ability is somewhat relevant. It's not amazing, but as I said with the white ones, I prefer to have this on a on an expensive card than a cheap card. So, if you're looking for a curve topper in your, in your draft deck, this you could you could do worse than this for sure. Here of the games, the mana for a three two. When you cast a spell, it targets it. Same thing. So, this, this, so like there's this hero effect in in all the colors. Um, this one's worse than the bear because a three two is much worse than a than a a three two for three is much worse than a two two for two. Um, this is like a filler limited card. Not very excited about it. Impending Doom. This card better be good. Because if they use the card Impending Doom, or the name Impending Doom on a card, that's a cool name. This better be good. Three mana for an aura. Enchant creature. 
Plus three plus three attacks each combat if able. When it dies, impending doom deals three damage to that creature's controller. It's cute. Um, it's okay. The three mana plus three plus three aura is risky. Your typical high risk, high reward limited card. You know, we've seen Oaken Form and things like that. Um, the fact that it has multiple downsides is pretty bad. Um, if you are attacking in your, your limited limited deck, this is definitely a a playable card, but my deck's got to be really, really aggressive uh, to play this card. Um, you can put it on your opponent's creatures if you have something really big, but you got to be really, really aggressive to want this card unplayable and constructed. If it costs two... Honestly, if it cost one, maybe we talk about this card constructed. We definitely would. That's that's pretty that's pretty good actually. But but yeah, it's too much mana. Incendiary Oracle, two mana for a two two. So already fine and limited. Uh, two mana fire breathing. That's great. If a creature dealt damage by this, would die. Exile it. Great limited card. Excellent bear and limited. Uh, scales well in the game. Has a relevant ability. Uh, trades up. Just this is this is your bread and butter limited card. I would not see cutting this card from my deck if I was playing a, a draft deck or a sealed deck. Obviously unplayable constructed, but this is your bread and butter limited card. Don't do not underestimate this card. This is a very solid two drop. Um, Infuriate, it's a bad giant growth. Um, unplayable constructed. Again, I think toughness is very important for pump spells. I would rather this card be plus two plus three in limited, but it's fine. It's an okay trick. It's not super exciting. Don't want too many of these, but it's obviously fine. And then one mana tricks are great. So Aros's blessing. Uh, we have a 4-mana aura. When it comes into play, deal 4 damage to a creature or planeswalker. Chain of creature gets plus 1, plus 1. This card's good. This is a very good limited card. Um, similar to Galvanic Arc, which is uh, in Ravnica. This is basically just a 4-mana spell. Deals 4 to a creature. And it gives you a little bit of bonus. And that's good. Um, don't get blown out, obviously. Don't play with, you know, with your opponent as much open mana. But turning your 3-3 into a 4-4... Four, four, and then killing your opponent's creature is very, very good. So, very solid limited card. Just be careful with it. Irreverent... Irreverent... It's a tongue twister. Irreverent Revelers. 3 mana for a 2-2. Two, two. This card's cool. So, it's either a Goblin Charioteers... Or no, Goblin Chariot. Or a... What card is that? Oh, uh, what's the card? 2-2 two, two, two kills an artifact. I don't know what it is, but... Reasonable card. Um, this is Manic Vandal. That's the one. Um, this is like a, a okay sideboard card in that like it kills an artifact and it's also not irrelevant otherwise. But it's not a very good card. If you want to kill an artifact, there's better cards than this. It's not main deckable. I wouldn't play this in limited most of the time. It's just a Goblin Chariot. It's not very good. Next born brute, a seven three four five. It's an enchantment creature. If you need a, need a curve topper and limited, this will do it for you. Omen of the Forge. So we have an interesting one here. So the Omen cycle is pretty interesting. Um, gives you Devotion. Gives you Constellation. Very nice synergy piece. Two mana for a shock. Not super exciting. But when you get a Devotion pip, when you get a, a thing sacrificed to things, you get Constellation triggers. This is very reasonable. This is very reasonable. And um, is it playable constructed? It's certainly worse than Shock. And it's competing directly with Bone Crusher Giant. And Bone Crusher Giant's a little better than this card is. So, not likely to see play in Constructed, but in Limited, this card's fantastic. It does everything you want it to do. Two mana shocks, already fine. And then it synergizes with basically everything. So, not super exciting, but definitely a solid card in Limited. Orrid of Mountain's Blaze, two mana for a 1 3. It's a looter. It's. I mean, this card is mildly playable in limited, um, much better in sealed than in, in draft, where you're more prone to flood. It's an, it's an enchantment creature, it blocks okay, but not a very exciting card. Uh, unplayable, constructed, and filler limited card if you need a mana sink. Uh, you're not unhappy to leave this card on the sidelines. Ooh boy. Okay. Ox of Agonis. We have a 5 mana 4 2. So not amazing on rate. What comes into play, discard your hand and draw three. So we have a kind of a similar-esque Bedlam Reveler card. Are you trying to escape against Zibi? Zibi likes this card. 
because he's actually trying to escape. I'm going to break the fourth wall again. <laughs> Great. Zibby's going to kill himself trying to escape. <laughs> Zibby likes the escape cards. He's into the mechanic. He's really getting into theme. Zibby's cosplaying as an ox of Agonis right now trying to escape. Um, <laughs> the great escape. So, similar to Bedlam Reveler in that it is... Uh, a card you want to play when your hand is empty because you just draw a bunch of cards, obviously. Uh, discard your hand has no meaning when you have no hand. So, as a curve topper, it is certainly reasonable. Um, I'm sorry, folks. You're being a bad hammy. You're being a bad hammy. Yes? You're going to get punished. You're being a bad hammy. Alright. Zibby wants to help. Um, so, as, at face value, this card is merely okay. Um... You know, if you play this with an empty hand and draw three cards, phenomenal. Uh, but not super exciting. What makes the card exciting is the escape cost and mostly older formats. So two mana to get a 5-3 that discards your hand draws cards. Now we're talking. So this card has serious potential in Dredge and Modern, um, as well as other possible graveyard decks. Eight is a lot to cards, a lot of cards to exile, but it's very, very true. But it is very, very easy to put um, one or two copies of his card in your deck and just find it later on. You know, when you're self-milling, you're finding a lot of cards. Um, this is a very, very powerful effect. I don't think this card is super exciting in standard, but don't underestimate the escape mechanic, as I keep saying over and over and over again. Uh, you already underestimated Delve. Don't underestimate escape. It's not the same mechanic, but... In this case, it kind of is, because most of the escape costs are more expensive than the mana costs. This one is a lot cheaper, so you are getting a cost reduction, which is huge. So, um, this card's good. I don't know where it goes in standard. I don't know where it goes in standard, but, like, I don't know what deck actively wants this card. It costs too much for aggro. It's a little too low impact for mid-range. Um, but, maybe a Phoenix deck... Maybe, but this is definitely an interesting one. It's a, it's a it's a it's a very powerful card. But it's a very weird card. So let's move on. Phoenix of Ash, three mana for a two two flying haste. So already reasonable rate there. Um, you can play three mana to pump it, which is reasonable. As escape, four mana exile three other cards. Escapes the plus one plus one counter. This card is very very reasonable. Um, on rate alone, this card's fine, and then it just gets better and better. It scales well into the late game as you can pump it. And then the Exile 3 to escape for a 3-3 three, three flyer for 4 is also great. Um, this is a very solid card. I like this card a lot. And I like this card a lot. Um, is a recursive and durable element against removal. Um, this is the kind of card that demands that your control deck or your you know, mid-rangey deck has some way to exile it or eventually you'll just lose to it. This card's very good. I like it a lot. Important to Betrayal, so just, we've seen this card before, just four, four mana Threaten, Scry 1. Scry 1 is not worth a mana. This is much worse than Active Treason. Unplayable and Constructed, and then in Limited, I mean, obviously you can build the Sacrifice deck. There are multiple Sacrifice outlets in Black Red, so the the Active Treason Carrion Feeder deck, gotcha, <laughs> is definitely a thing, but it's not a very powerful card. Perforos, so we get to our Red God, Perforos. And Perforos is pretty interesting. We have a 5 mana 7 6. So, pretty damn big. Also, pretty damn expensive. Indestructible. 5 more devotions creature. Other creatures you control have haste. I wish it said all, honestly. Then you have 3 mana to put a red creature card or an artifact creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. And it has haste because of Perforos, obviously. Sacrifice it to be your next end step. I can't wait for someone to untap with this card. Play for six land. Pay three, put something huge. Pay three, put something huge. Then their opponent brazen borrowers the Perforos while they watch both their creatures just die and do nothing. It's pretty funny. So, I think this card is, is pretty mopey. As I've said with all the gods, the upfront cost is the biggest part of the card. The reason Heliod's the best god is because it costs three. Thassa was the best god in Theros because it costs three. 
costing four is tough. You can't just tap four mana on your main phase and do nothing in a game of standard. Standard games are very snowball-y. Um, so tapping five mana, playing this, hoping to untap, and then sneak attack something in, it's a little bit of a pipe dream, honestly. But I think this card is more fun than anything else. The only caveat to that is the card Fires of Invention. So if you are not spending five mana for this card and just putting it to play for free, maybe then you got something. You know, um, you could put in a Cavalier and then sneak attack at something else. Cavalier can turn on the Devotion. That's the place this card could definitely go. Um, if you're trying to play this just as a 7-6 for five, is that even good? If it had haste itself, maybe, but... It's just not very exciting, and the floor is so low. So low. So, don't like this card that much. Yeah, you can put in Dracuseth. Dracuseth's really cool. Obviously, hasted Dracusets are insane, but this card's just... It's fun, but it's it's just not super important for Constructed. In Limited, take it, win the game, since it's a, it's a mythic. It's honestly worse in, in Limited than most of the other cards are, most of their gods are, but this card's pretty overrated. Um... It's cool, but the floor, the floor is very, very low. What's like a Perforos inter 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 Intervention, though? So another only one symbol and X. The modal interventions, of course, Sorcery. I'm going to read it backwards, because the second ability is much more important than the first one. Perforos Intervention deals twice X damage to our creature, Planeswalker. So, for two mana, you have a Shock. For three mana, you have a, you have a, a four damage, you know, a Char. For four mana... You have a six damage spell. Now, we can't target players, obviously, because that would be broken. But this card scales pretty well as far as killing things goes. Um, and if their Planeswalker is kind of out of control, you can wait a turn and then kill it for really big. It kills large creatures. It is a sorcery. Um, at instant speed, this card would be much more exciting. But it's still got a lot of power, and it's pretty good at killing things. And the good news is, the problem is if you play your Shock or your Flame Slash kind of card and your opponent's not playing creatures, well, it's dead. This card's not dead, at least. You can at least make a creature or attack him with it. Um, if it was an instant, I'd be really high on this card. As a sorcery, I think it is a playable card. It's not very exciting, but if you're playing a red deck and you need to be able to kill larger creatures and or Planeswalkers. This card does that job, just not particularly well. But it gets the job done. So it is playable. It's not super exciting. And then limited, obviously it's busted. It's just a rare. Uh, but it, uh, it doesn't make X elementals, unfortunately. So when I first read the card, I thought it made X creatures. So for Risen Reef, you go, wah! But uh, it doesn't work like that, unfortunately. So it's okay. It's not super exciting. Definitely passable. Satyr's Cunning. One mana to make a token that can't block and escape for three. Again, I think that the the Seder tokens that can't block are much, much, much worse than your random your random tokens. Uh, tokens do a lot of blocking. Chump blocking, gang blocking, adding onto a block. So my 2-2 two, two, and token for your 3-3. Three, three. Tokens not being able to block is tough because tokens don't attack very well. I think this card is very bad. Um, yeah, you can make tokens over and over again, but it just sucks. If This card is basically only good if your opponent is playing a deck that has no blockers at all and wants to play an insanely long game. Um, even as an instant, like it doesn't really matter because you can't block with it anyway, so not very good. Not very good. If you have a lot of use for fodder, um, things, sacrifice, stuff like that, then um, it still sucks. <laughs> this card's just bad. If escape cost was two, Two mana, two cards, maybe, but... What? It's not even a word. Whatever, Maze Warden. Uh, four mana, four, eight, three, four, uncommon, so rate's already reasonable. Pay one to get plus one, minus one. That's okay. Whenever another creature you control becomes target of an ability... Well, well, hold on. Whenever another creature becomes the target of an ability of a land you control named Labyrinth of Skip whatever, you may have this fight that creature. Well, I haven't even seen that card yet, so I don't know what it is. That's the that's the bad Maze of Ith, right? Uh, Alright. Yeah, I get it. It's a maze. This is basically irrelevant on all fronts. You're not blowing this card to Constructed. 
you're not going to have the rare in limited. The one time you do, it'll be a great story. Um, this is an okay limited card and nothing more. The War Leader, 5 mana for a 4 5. It's okay rate. Play one, sacrifice another creature or enchantment. It gets plus one and gains menace till end of turn. This is a reasonable, a reasonable curve topper again. It's not great. It's not great. But um, if you need a, you need a curve topper, it's, it's okay. Stampede Rider, two three for three with trample. Beginning combat, if you control creature power four raider, it gets plus one plus one on a turn. Eh, it's limited limited fodder. It's not a very good card. The rate's very low and the payoff's very low too. This card's pretty bad. Storm Herald is a 3 mana for a 3-2 haste, so the rate's pretty good. Oh, I like this card a lot. When it enters the battlefield, return any number of aura cards from your graveyard to the battlefield attached to creatures you control. Exile those auras, beginning of your next end step. Those auras would leave the battlefield, exile them, put them in the mana. So this card's really, really cool. I'm definitely building some fun Pioneer or Modern deck with this card. Um, this card just brings back all the auras in your graveyard for a one-shot attack. And... That's pretty cool, honestly. It's a fun, it's a fun card. The fact that it's a three-two haste for three already makes it very reasonable on rate. Um, you can go bananas with Eldrazi Conscription. Um, there's tons of big stupid ores you can get back. Um, just fun, cute. All the glitters, yeah. Uh, ethereal armor. It's just a cute card. It's fun. I'm sure we'll do some fun stuff with this card, but uh, it's probably not super. You know, it'll matter super much in. Uh, you're going insane, man. You're going crazy. It's not going to matter too much in Constructed, but it's we're going to do some fun stuff with this card for sure. So, cool card. In Limited, I mean, a 3-2 Haste for 2 is fine. It's a medium level card in Limited. I doubt you'll do much with the ability, but it's okay. Definitely a fun card, though. Storm's Wrath. This card's pretty relevant. So, 4, mana, four damage to each creature, each Planeswalker, Sorcery, 4 mana. Um, Red has never seen a Wrath like this before. This is uh, basically Super Languish for Red. Uh, language, of course, is the black spell. It gives minus four, minus four. If there's a red control deck, um, this card is very, very real. And the fact that it hits Planeswalkers also is... It's it's weird because it's big game it's bad games. Our Devastation was somewhat similar to this. And it was hard to play because your Planeswalkers are so good. So if, if this kills your own Planeswalkers, that kind of sucks. But the power level certainly here. Uh, plays very well Fires. Fires in this card is phenomenal, and it's honestly possible that with Fires and this card, you can play straight blue-red and skip out on white, because you don't need a Wrath Effect anymore. And if you're playing creatures, then great. Um, this card's really good. It's not really much to say here. It's just a very powerful card. It <laughs> doesn't kill Oko, obviously, but Oko's banned, so who cares? Uh, powerful card. Gonna see a lot of play. Needs to have a deck that wants it, but powerful card overall. And then Limited. Um, this is not as good as it looks in Limited, but it's still very good. Um, modern probably wants Anger of the Gods. Pioneer, maybe. It's all about context of what the sizing of the creature is. But. Tectonic Giant, 4 mana for a 3 4. A lot of 4 mana 3 4s in this set. Um, when it attacks or blocks, or becomes target of a spell or ability. I'm sorry. A, a spell an opponent controls. Choose one. It deals 3 damage to each opponent, or you exile the top 2 cards of your library. Choose one of them and light up stage it. card's weird. Um, it's only spell your opponent controls, so it's like terrible against a fairy. Um, and they just play it and bounce it, and it doesn't affect the board the turn you play it. It's not that big. Um, I would say this card's pretty unexciting. Once it's actually in play, it's reasonable, um, but so they, they play a spell and kill it. All right. They take three, who cares? You know, this is just not a very powerful card for 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 um for four mana. This the rate here is just not good enough. It's an elemental, which might matter. Um it's cute with Torbrand, sure, but this card is not very good. It attacks for six. Yeah, I mean they can just block it and kill it. You know, it just it's just the rate here just isn't good enough. If this is a three three for three, I'd be more interested, but for four mana, you gotta do better than this and constructed. In limited, yeah, it's it's bananas and limited, just bananas. But this is the kind of card that's like insane and limited, but a little short constructed. Not very excited here. The Cronin War. We have a saga. It's a rare. It's four mana. Chapter one. Gain control of target creature for as long as his cards in the battlefield. It's pretty interesting. It's a pseudo control magic. Um, Red doesn't get this effect. 
Red gets threatens, not control magic. So we get to steal a creature for the next two turns. Chapter two. Until your next turn, creatures your opponents control have to attack. So they have to attack into you, which can be pretty good. And then chapter three, each tapped creature deals damage equal to itself to its power. So they have to attack you, and then all the things that attack you have to kill themselves. This card's pretty good. Um, it's a very weird card because you like have to steal a creature. Your opponent has to have creatures, you know, um, for this card to matter. So there's definitely a number of matchups where you're just not gonna want to. Uh, it's not not want this card at all. But this card is powerful um, in a creature matchup. You can just steal something and like slow them down. It's funny because the thing you steal won't die to the uh, the third effect. And then again, if they're so they, if they have three fours, they don't die. So that's kind of relevant too. This is a very weird card. I would say this card's probably too complicated and long winded to be playable and constructed. Um, the the specifics of what need what the board needs to look like for this card to be good are pretty specific. Uh, and those board states aren't exactly common in standard. Um, the it's gonna be a lot of creatures, honestly. You know, it's a very weird card, but I think it's a little too weird to be effective and constructed. Um, this card's broken and limited, just totally broken for sure. But this card may have like sideboard applications in creature matchups, but it's a very weird card. A lot of things can go wrong with this card. Uh, I don't think it's super exciting. It's cool, but... The Triumph of Annex. Three mana for an uncommon saga. Chapter 1 and 2 and 3. To end a turn, creature gets Trample and plus X plus O, where X is the number of lore counters on Triumph of Annex. So cool. So chapter 1's plus 1, chapter 2's plus 2, chapter 3's plus 3. So kind of cute. Um, kind of like a pseudo aura that can be moved around for 3 turns. In theory, it's worth six damage. It's one, then two, then three. Although, obviously, trample and base power um, matter there, too. And then the fourth chapter is creature you control fights creature you don't control. This effect does not seem good enough for constructed. You pop a creature, you just kill it. The fight might not matter. It's not just that it doesn't do enough. In limited, this card seems great. But in constructed, this card's not going to do it. In limited, this card's good, I think. Probably. Um, maybe not, actually. I just don't think it does enough. Like, the first two turns, like, plus one and plus two aren't good enough. You know? I don't think this card's very good. I don't like it. Thrill Possibility's back. Like this card a lot. I mean, Tormenting Voice is already fine. As an instant, it's even better. Synergy card. Graveyard card. Like it. Underworld Breach. Oh, boy, Underworld Breach. Oh, bud. Oh, boy. Zibby, talk about this card, please. He is freaking amped. Um, as, it's past midnight here, so this, this is his, his wakey time. Um, Underworld Breach. <sighs> Two mana enchantment. Each non-land card in your graveyard has escape. The escape cost equal to the card's mana cost plus exile three other cards in the graveyard. Benny for end step sacrifices. It's basically Yagmoth's will um, that requires cards in the graveyard to be good. People have talked about this card, Brain Freeze, in older formats. You just, like, play an LED, play Brain Freeze, you keep LEDing, and whatever it is. Um, I don't want to, like, think about this card, honestly. <laughs> this card's just stupid. Someone's going to break this card in an older format. I would say it's unplayable and standard. Um, I mean, it's certainly probably busted in in Legacy, maybe Modern, obviously Vintage. I don't want to talk about this card, whatever, screw this card. It's, it's, not, it's probably not playable in Standard. Just figure it out. Someone will break it and just play the deck they play, then they'll ban it and whatever, who cares. So, Underworld Fires, two mana, four sorcery, one damage to each creature, each Planeswalker. Exile things that would damage this way. This is a sideboard card. Um, it's just like, pretty narrow in application. If your opponent has one top of creatures, it does fine. Uh, it's pretty good against cards like Gutter Bones, things like that. Um, it's pretty good against um, the the cat as well, with no oven, of course. Um, sideboard card, probably unplayable in your main deck and limited, but it's a card. It's a card. Underworld Ragehound, 2 mana for a 3-1. Must attack every turn, 
and can come be even bigger. If you're hyper aggressive, this card's okay, but it's not great otherwise. Uh, it's okay. Unplayable constructed. Rapid Flames. If you're playing limited, and you can't win. Uh, if you can't win in combat, or your opponent has multiple one toughness creatures. Pour this card in. That's it for red. So some limited some limited cards to finish out there. That's the red. That's the red set review. Um, we're gonna keep going here, but hopefully you enjoyed red. If you're watching on YouTube, all the other colors are in other videos, so please take a, take a moment to look for those. Jim Davis MTG on YouTube. Please, if you have three seconds, want to support me? If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and leave a comment. Let me know what card you think is the best red card in this set. All right, I love you all. Thanks so much, YouTube. Look for green coming up next.